Hello and welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. In this video, we're going to solve equations with more than one square root. And more importantly, we're going to have square roots inside of square roots. These things look a little scary when you first see them, but uh, what you notice is that when we get to the solving techniques, we use the exact same ones as if we just had like just one square root in there. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the process. When you have square roots inside of square roots, uh, your two biggest tools are isolating a square root on one side and then squaring both sides to get rid of that root. Now since we'll have so many roots and, and they'll be packaged up inside of one another, we'll actually have to repeat these first two steps until all of our roots are gone. Now once we have removed all of the roots from the equation, we'll be able to solve the remaining equation. So maybe it'll be linear, maybe it'll be quadratic, but it'll be a little bit nicer than something that has a whole bunch of roots. In the very end, we want to make sure that we check all of our solutions uh, just to make sure that they all work in the original. All right, so I have two examples. Uh, let's get to them and see how this process works. In the first one, I want to solve the square root of 2 multiplied by the square root of 23x plus 8 is all equal to the square root of 4x plus 4. So over here on the left side, we have roots inside of roots, and I even have another one over here. Uh, to start off this process, I want to start isolating roots. Unfortunately, you know, this root is isolated and so is this one. So if I square both sides right now, it'll actually get rid of two of my roots. So let's square the left and square the right. All right, this will make things uh, a lot nicer for us. So it'll remove one of our roots, so two times the square root of 23x plus 8 equals square over here. 4x plus 4. Okay, now we really only have one more root to deal with, and uh, it's pretty much isolated as it is on one side. So again, we'll square both sides right now and get rid of that one as well. Now notice on the right side we have two terms, uh, so you want to remember that that side we will have to foil it. Let's write a little note, foil. All right, let's see what we get for this one. Uh, so if I square a 2, I get a 4. If I square a square root, all of that will be gone. So 23x plus 8. And over on this side, now it's time to foil. So 4x times 4x, 16x squared. Uh, outside term would be a 16x. Inside terms, another 16x. And last terms, plus 16. Okay. So at this point, uh, we've used step one and step two, and we've removed all of our roots. So from here on out, I just want to try and solve the remaining equation, and it looks like it's quadratic. Uh, let's work to combine as many things as we can, uh, and treat it like any other quadratic. So, you know, when we get uh, it set equal to zero, uh, maybe use the quadratic formula or even factoring on it. All right, let's distribute this four in here. And let's go ahead and combine a few of these guys here. All right, so four times 23, that'll give me a 92x plus four times eight, 32. 16x squared plus 16 plus 16, so plus 32x plus 16. Okay, looking nice. Uh, let's get everything over on the right side. So we'll subtract our 92x subtract 92x, and let's go ahead and subtract this 32 minus 32. So zero is equal to 16x squared minus a 60x minus 16. Okay, and those numbers are fairly large, uh, but fortunately it looks like we can divide everything by four and make our job a little bit easier. So 16 divided by four, 4x squared, uh, 60 divided by 4, minus 15x, and 16 divided by 4, minus 4. Okay, so that's a much better equation to work with. And again, you could solve this using the quadratic formula, uh, but I'm just going to factor it. That way we can save lots of time. So this factors into 4x plus 1 and x minus 4. And from here we get uh, two possible solutions. So x could equal a negative 1 fourth, or x could equal a positive 4. All right, so it's a lot of work just to get to this step, but remember we have to check these two solutions to make sure they really do work out. 
So let's go back to that original, now that we have these, and check them, see what happens. Remember, we must put uh, these values in everywhere we see an x. Let's do this negative 1 fourth first. So we'll have the square root of 2, square root of 23, and then we'll go ahead and put in that uh, negative 1 fourth right there. Have a little plus 8. And we want to know, does this really equal the other side? 4 plus 4, and let's put in the negative 1 fourth over there. All right, not bad. All right, so working on the left side, let's see what we can do. Uh, if I combine a negative 1 fourth times a 23, I get a negative 23 fourths. And I'm going to want to add this to the 8. So let's get a common denominator right now uh, by multiplying the top and bottom by 4. So plus 32 fourths. Okay. So all of that is underneath one square root. It's being multiplied by 2. And it's all underneath another square root. And you check, does it really equal? Let's see over here. 4 times a negative 1 fourth. That's just a negative 1 plus 4. Well, it looks like the right side simplifying a lot simpler than the, the left one. But uh, let's go ahead and combine these things and see what else we can do. Negative 23 fourths plus 32 fourths would be 9 fourths. Again, it's being multiplied by 2 and another square root. Okay, negative 1 plus 4, square root of 3. All right. So when we take the square root of a fraction, square root of the top, and square root of the bottom, so this will be the square root of 2 times 3 halves. All right, and uh, multiplying 2 by 3 halves, I just have a 3. So after plugging it in, I get the square root of 3 is equal to the square root of 3, and I can see that, yes, those two things are equal, so x equals negative 1 fourth is one of my solutions. All right, definitely a lot of work. Got to think about your fractions, uh, but we got one more to check out. Let's go ahead and put 4 into both of these as well. So we'll have a 23. All of that will be multiplied by a 4. 4. Let's put on all of those square roots. So underneath one square root, multiplied by 2. Underneath another square root, equals... And the other four right into here. All right, bit by bit. Uh, 23 times 4. Well, that's equal to a 92. Square root multiplied by 2, square root. Uh, over on the right side, I have 4 times 4, which is a 16. Uh, still can't tell if they're the same, so let's keep going. Uh, over here, I can say... 92 plus 8 is 100. So multiplied by 2 underneath the square root equals. Uh, and these two put together 20. All right, almost there. Square root of 100 is 10. And now I think things are looking pretty good. Square root of 20 equals square root of 20. It looks like this one also worked out. All right, we're in good shape. So this one has two solutions. Uh, x is equal to a negative 1 fourth, and x is also equal to a 4. Both of those are valid solutions. All right, let's look at one more example. That way you have the process down pat. In this next one, we want to solve a 7 minus the square root of x is equal to the square root of 5 times the square root of x minus 29. A lot of stuff going on over here. That's where we have a root inside of another root. All right, to work on this one, um, we need to work on isolating a root, and you could isolate this one, but it's actually going to be a lot easier to isolate this one because it's already all by itself on the right side. So let's just begin by squaring both sides. So square over here, square over here. All right, looks like on the left side, I have two terms. So we'll be sure to FOIL that one out. All right, let's see what we got. So foiling out the left, 49 minus a 7 square root of x minus 7 square root of x 
then we'll have a negative times a negative, so positive square root of x squared. All right, and I think that takes care of all of the left side. Over on the right, the square and the square root will eliminate them. So just a five square root of x minus 29. Now we're in much better shape. Okay, so we've gotten rid of a few things, but I still have a lot of roots left. Uh, watch how many of these things we can actually combine and get rid of. So negative seven times the square root of x, negative seven times the square root of x. So negative 14 square root of x, putting those two together. Uh, take a square root and square it. Now I just have x all by itself. And five square root of x minus 29. Okay, so let's see what else we can do with this. Well. Uh, no use having my square roots on two different sides. Let's get them on the same side by adding a 14 square root of x to the left and the right. Let's see. Anything else we can... Oh, actually, we can go ahead and move maybe the 29 over. So plus 29, plus 29. All right. Uh, so this will give us a 78. These guys will go away. I still have an x equals. Now these two are put together. 19 square root of x. Okay, so again, a lot of work. Now I only have one square root at this step, and it's pretty much all by itself on the right side. So now that we have that, let's try and get rid of this guy by squaring both sides again. All right, we're gonna get some pretty big numbers. And um, even though we kind of don't want to, we really do have to foil the, that left side. All right, let's see what this gives us. Uh, 78 times 78, 6,084. Let's see, outside terms plus a 78x, inside terms plus another 78x, and my last terms plus x squared equals all right, so I'll have to square both numbers in here. 19 times 19, 361. Square, uh, square root of x, x. All right, uh, this one looks like it's going to be quadratic and there's a lot of things in here that I can go ahead and combine. For example, I can put these uh, 78 x's together and get 156 x. And then I could actually subtract 361 x from both sides. Uh, the rest, I think, is just going to be a lot of rearranging. So let's go ahead and write our x squared term first. Uh, combine all of our x terms on the left side. So minus 205x. And we still have the 6084. All right, this one is a fairly uh, complicated looking quadratic. Uh, the numbers are really big in here, and this one might be a good one to actually use the quadratic formula on it. Uh, again, I'm just going to save some time by factoring, and say this factors into an x minus 36 and an x minus 169. Uh, in reality, we probably wouldn't try and factor something quite so large. You'd probably just drop it into the quadratic formula and see what two solutions you get. Uh, but anyway, we get two things out of here, so x equals 36 and x equals 169. All right, this one required quite a bit of work, you know? Make sure you FOIL when you have two terms, uh, make sure you're isolating and getting the square roots together as best you can, and you will get some solutions. All right, even though we really want to be done, let's go ahead and check both of these in the original to see which ones work. So we need to check 36 and we need to check 169. Uh, let's start off with this 36. So seven minus the square root. Uh, we'll put our first little 36 right in there. Good. Then we're checking, is it equal to the square root, five times the square root, let's put in this 36 here, minus 29. All right, so the square root of 36 is six. That's a nice one. Let's see, and the square root of the other 36 is also 6. So this one, even though the numbers are big, doesn't look like it's uh, that bad to plug in. Uh, 7 minus 6 is 1. 5 times 6 is a 30. 
So over here on the left side, I have 30 minus 29, or the square root of 1. So I'm looking at 1 equals to 1. And of course, that is definitely a true statement. So we'll say, yes, these two things are equal. I know that x equals 36 is a solution. All right, that's pretty tough. Uh, let's go ahead and check the other one. 7 minus the square root. Here's what we'll, we'll put in the 169 equals the square root of 5, square root of 169. And we'll do a little minus 29, and it's all still under that larger root. Okay, uh, the square root of 169 is actually 13. So those guys will simplify pretty nicely. So 5 times 13 minus 29. Okay, 7 minus 13 over there would be a negative 6. Let's keep checking on the right side. So uh, 5 times 13, 65. 65 minus 29 is 36. So I have negative 6 is equal to 6. And of course, looking at that one, ah, we're so close, but a negative number cannot equal a positive number. So we're going to say, nope, those two things are not the same, and we do not want x equals 169. So the only solution for this next one uh, is x equals 36. All right, we can see the process is pretty similar for solving uh, other uh, radical equations, and hopefully this helps out uh, when you do have radicals inside of radicals. If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit mysecretmathtutor.com.